Hello! Happy Wednesday! Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects uh, with you guys from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process and see uh, all my like wins and my struggles along the way and hopefully we can all learn together. Uh, so uh, tonight we are going to continue on the Estelle block from the Splendid Sampler. Oh, I lost my page here. Let's see if we can find it again. Do you guys remember what page it's on? I think it's page 30. Eh, nope. Estelle, where are you? So we are going to be cutting, oh, there we are. Oh, I had a bookmark. <laughs> so we're gonna be working on all the little half square triangles that are gonna go into that pinwheel, all, all these little pinwheels, all these little triangle bits. Uh, we sewed them yesterday, so tonight we are going to press them uh, and press them and trim them, which will take a little bit of time uh, tonight. That'll probably take the whole time tonight, actually, but it's gonna be good. Once we get through that, then we're gonna be uh, good to go. Uh, so, all right, and I also talked about yesterday my uh, little baby quilt that I'm working on, and uh, I got a little bit farther on that tonight. Kind of had a snow day afternoon here, you guys. We got like four inches of snow. <sighs> within an hour, like around at two o'clock and it, it's still snowing. It's, oh man, we're having a whole snow emergency tomorrow. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stay home tomorrow too, but like, holy cow, I left work. I literally left the office, had to wipe down two inches of snow off of the car, went back in to get my purse, came back and I had to wipe off more snow from the windshield again. Ugh. It came, it was coming down that fast. They were just big flakes. So anyway, it's, it's making me, it's a big downer today, people, with that snow. <laughs> I just want it to be spring. So anyway, I worked on this baby quilt in the afternoon instead, and that made me happier. So I'll show you my progress on that and kind of talk to you about the process of that. So I'm gonna actually zoom you way back here so I can show you guys. So here is the baby quilt so far. I actually have most of it sewn together. Let's see, this is the top. Okay, so this is the front. Oh gosh, I need to get back way further yet. Let's see if I can go way back here and I'll stand up on my chair. So here we are, you guys. This is the quilt so far. It is, you know, kind of a graphic a little bit. And then the back is the reverse of it. So this is that slash technique. And it's actually a combination of two different kind of blocks. So it's two techniques. It's the slash to get, you know, two things that are just like the opposite colors. And then I'm going to, so I'll, I'll kind of tell you guys a little bit about that. But then I also, I just started to tie the quilt as well. So I'm gonna, I'm putting in all these little, little ties to hold it together. So I'm doing that about five inches apart. So I just started that. I have to mark the rest of it. But yep, it's a nice green quilt. It's all penguin and fish fabric uh, that I'm using up. There's the little guys there. So, so far so good, you guys. And I gotta play with uh, a little experiment. Oh, you love the hexi fabric? Yes, the hexies. So, it's going to a person who is a teacher. So I have, um, it has like that penmanship paper. Um, this is grow, it's backwards in the, in the phone here, but it's the penmanship paper and it's also like hexes or, or blocks. So that's kind of school, but uh, the dad is an architect. So uh, the whole quilt's kind of architectural a little bit. Um, and uh, you know, the blocks, building blocks, I thought worked with that too. And it's, it's gonna be a boy, so I thought the, the green the green was good. Uh, but I wanted to kind of show you that technique a little bit. So I'm gonna flip you around and I'm just gonna draw it out for you here. Because I know, um, oops, ugh, sometimes it's hard to turn. Uh, some people were wondering about it a little bit. 
yesterday what the slash technique was. So here's here's kind of what I did. I'm gonna just draw for you guys. I'm gonna draw on my little bookmark here. Um, so, all right, I started out with two pieces of fabric. So I, I put two pieces of fabric on top of each other. So one and two. And then I just cut a diagonal out of it. So I just cut straight through there. And I took this top piece and put it under. So now I have two pieces, you know, one like this and one like this. You see what I mean? So I, I took the two pieces, cut, uh, put the bottom piece and sewed it back together. And then I'd have, then I sewed the other two pieces together. So I have like opposites, right? So one of this is the front of the quilt and one's the back. But then I did it again. I made another block and this one I put just a diagonal strip in there and I cut that and I put that on top too. But I actually added to both, I added a little white strip to it as well. So you have one that's like this and then one the, just the opposite. So kind of like that. So you, you kind of see what I'm saying? So by stacking, stacking the two layers of fabric, then just putting a slash, taking the bottom piece, putting it on the top and sewing it back together, um, gets us these like kind of mirrored image, you know, like this is the mirror of this or not the mirror image, but the, the colors are flipped, right? And same thing, the colors are flipped here. And then I just added, like I said, I just added when I was done um, flipping them. I added an extra strip just to have a little bit more interest in there. But then what I did is, so this is the front of the quilt. And then this is the back. So front and back. So what I did next is I cut, I, I cut it in thirds and I cut this in thirds. So then I traded off. So I did this piece first, you know, and then this piece, which now looks like that. It has that little slit in there. And then this piece. So like if this is a like a one and then B one and then a two. And then I had a little bit of that triangle. And then this one. See what I'm saying? It was just kind of layered. There's the rest of that triangle from there. And then this bottom piece. So that's, that's kind of how this was accomplished. Yep. So then it was a whole quilt. So it looks like this really architectural thing. And then I did the same thing on the back. So then I had a back that looks just like this, but all the colors are flipped around, right? So now this black is over here. Uh, same, you know, because it's just the flip version. So then I sewed those two together and that that's my quilt basically. I um I sewed the so one's the front, one's the back, and I just um put some batting in there and sewed around and then flipped it right side out. And now I'm just doing the quilting. So it was a fun, fun for me to play. I wanted to try that technique of putting it into thirds and taking two different blocks and blending them together. Uh, so that was that was just kind of fun for me. Uh, it was an experiment, so I always have to try something new with with every little project, even if it's like a baby quilt like that. So that that was really fun. So now I'm just finishing it up with some quilt ties, uh, and I'll show you it tomorrow as well. So tomorrow, um, hopefully, I'll be done with it, and I'm gonna wash it up, and so it should, should fluff up a little bit, and I'll, I'll share it with you guys then as well. So you'll get a little bit of some progress. But right now we are going to work on the Estelle block. We are going to continue on this. Uh, so here's where we're at. Yesterday we, uh, I have it divided in steps, like in the, um, in the order that it has the instructions. So this is like step two. Um, this is, uh, actually two and three. And then this is step, um, step four, step five, and step six, just because there's so many little pieces that I didn't want to get them confused. But we, what we're doing is we're making little half square triangles like, like this guy. So one half is tan, one half is white. So we finished that for uh, these four here, but now we have oodles and oodles more of them. So they're already sewn and, tr and cut in half. 
So there's another one. Oh, that one's cute with it, right? Um, so now I'm gonna just press and trim these and that's probably gonna take this entire time, you guys. So I'm gonna put them up here. Actually, I'm gonna shimmy them down so we can see them. And I, I have my pressing mat on here tonight. Uh, just because I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for us. I'm going to get a little taller. Oh, you make changing pad covers and burp cloths. Oh, burp cloths. That's a great idea. Oh, with leftover fabric. Oh, Shauna, I love that idea. That's like a perfect um, shower gift. Just something like that. Oh, I like it. All right, let's start out by pressing, pressing these. I'm going to get a little higher. Okay. So I got the iron. I think the iron's heating up still. All right, it has the pressing instructions. I want to press them towards this yellow. So what I'm gonna do, so press the seam allowance, which just means the seam allowance bends on the same side of that yellow like this versus like this. This would be um, towards the white. We want it towards, towards the yellow. So how I do that is I place the yellow side up and place it on my pressing pad here. And just going to uh, give it a little press just to kind of set the seam. Ooh, I might have to move this, we'll see. And then I just flip it open and press that seam down. And there we go. So now we have our hat or half square triangle, and then all we have to do is trim it down. So let's just go ahead and press all of these. So I'm gonna make just a big old stack. We'll get a little bit closer here like this. Big stack. So I could not believe the snow today, you guys. Just, ugh. That's why, uh, yes, I was saying yesterday that I went for a, a walk, um, even though it was a little, little, little breezy. It was still nice out, still felt like spring, but I needed that spring feel in my body before all this snow came. And it's really tomorrow is when we're supposed to get most of the snow. <sighs> Guess I shouldn't complain. In the west of the state, they got a lot more, I think. Like they were talking like two feet of snow. Oh my God. <sighs> so that's that, I suppose. But soon it'll be spring for real. And uh, we have little, our little irises are popping up and I'm excited for all that. Ooh, that sounds fun, Shauna. I've never used that crinkle, um, stuff you know that uh, that's that crinkle i think you can buy it um just what is it even crinkle paper kind of and then you can put it in like little kids stuff and it'll get that crinkly that neat feel that they that they like and that sound oh terry it's it started snowing for you on the way home that's how it was for me too and you guys i'm uh, i'm just it's irking me for some reason, but I didn't go to the gym today. And I, I'm just making it, like I don't wanna make that a habit, not going after coming home from work, but I didn't, I mean, I have a good reason. I didn't go because I was not sure I'd be able to dig the car out after being at the Y for, like if I went to the Y for an hour or something. Um, I honestly wasn't, I thought I'd have like, you know, yeah, like six inches of snow on the, on the car after leaving. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll just go home. So uh, that was excuse number one of not going to the Y and that's not a habit. I, I don't want to have excuses, but you know, snow emergency and all. <laughs> Let it slide uh, today and tomorrow when we're going to have all the crazy snow. So here's our next pair of half square triangles. It's uh, the same thing I needed it towards the yellow. So I have the yellow at the top, but we have, it's yellow and um, this other fabric, if I can flip it, this kind of flowery cream fabric. 
So I have this in a stack on their own. Oh man, it's 70s by you. Oh, 80s tomorrow. Oh my goodness. This weekend is thunder over Louisville. Oh, is that like a... <laughs> I, is that like a big convention? I was just going to ask, is that like Walleye Weekend? <laughs> Walleye Weekend was our town's like big kind of summer event. <laughs> That's what my brain's... Brain said, oh, is that like Walleye Weekend? But then I'm like, no one's going to know what Walleye Weekend is. Oh, 93 in Texas. Oh, sheesh. Oh, they canceled school. Oh, with only 30 minutes left? Oh, my gosh. Well, it kind of came down like that, though, Tracy, didn't it? It kind of just, you know, the snow started, and then all of a sudden there was two inches on the ground like a half hour later. It was kind of crazy. And it's just because it was so fat. Hefty. Oh, you can use baby white container bags for the crinkled paper. Oh, that's interesting, Josa. Huh. I don't have those lying around. Tomorrow we're getting ice. Yeah, I think, um, Terry, where are you? Uh, I think that's kind of what it sounds like here. Like, originally we were supposed to get the ice and slush today, and then tomorrow we were supposed to get the, like, bajillion inches of snow, but we got a whole pile today. Oh, the biggest fireworks display in the country. Oh, it was so fun. Oh my gosh, that's cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Keep your dogs at home. <laughs> oh, your grandkids love the, the Crickville sound. Oh, okay, you're in Rochester. So yeah, you're, ooh, you're probably getting it a little bit. I'm, I'm in the Minneapolis area, Terry. So you're probably getting it a bit more... Or it was pretty west. It was kind of, you're like directly under us. So it was kind of more westish, wasn't it? Um, I don't know. But yeah, I could understand why they'd cancel school with the 30 minutes left. I mean, kind of silly, but it did come down that fast. That's why I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to go for the why. I had to go to the Joanne Fabrics because I was out of uh, I was out of batting <laughs> for that baby quill. I didn't have a, a piece of batting that big. With this quilt as you go, we haven't been using large pieces of batting, and I didn't realize I, I was out. So I had to go to Joanne's, and I was afraid I would get stuck there, um, just going in and out of there. All right, so we're on the next section. I just want to make sure that I'm pressing these the right direction. So for these, it looks like we press to the white, okay, and then for these, we press towards, let's see, oh, I'm gonna have to peek a little closer. Okay, weird, okay, so these ones we press towards the white, and these ones we press towards the florally color. Okay. All right. Got that situated. Oh, hey Julie, are you are you getting it down in Iowa too? The snow. You know, it's just a bummer because when you have we had two spring feeling days and then it hits you with some more snow and it's just makes you sad. Yeah, well. It will come. Ugh, but it was so nice to walk outside. That's kind of the first first walk of the year where it felt like spring yesterday. All right, we're almost done pressing these, and then it'll be cutting for the the rest of the evening here. No snow, but high winds. Ugh, yeah. I think we're supposed to have the high winds tomorrow. Oh, super cold again. Yeah, we're in the 30s. Luckily, that wasn't so horribly cold, like when I had to wipe the car off of the the inches of snow. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't so chilly. Oh, strawberry picking tomorrow. Gretchen, I used to work at a strawberry farm, and uh, um, it was like a pick your own sort of place. So I I would um. Uh, tell people where to park and what rows they could pick in and where where the rows have already been picked and where they haven't been picked. <laughs> so that was a fun job. And ate so many strawberries, oh my god. 
straight from the vine, or it's not, they're not vines, but straight from the, from the plant. And after they've been heated up in the sunshine, those are good. Those are, that's the way to eat strawberries. Yum, yum. Yeah, I forgot, that's, that's a early, early fruit. That's like a, that's a June, a June, a late June, um, early July fruit for us here. Or June for sure. Ugh, feels like 27 with the wind chill. Boo! Oh, you have your jam making tools ready. Yum. So good. Ugh, I love strawberries. And it, it, it just is totally different getting it right from the sunshine. Yum. Oh, yes, they're the best, Deborah. They don't grow strawberries there at, at that place anymore. They just do apples in the fall now, but ugh, when they had strawberry season, that was just my favorite. All right, we are pressed here. Um, so I think I'm gonna actually just, this is getting really warm. I wonder if, probably shouldn't be using it on my, my um, uh, sewing table here, but oh well. All right, I'm gonna just transfer these onto this guy here and I'm gonna get my rotating mat here I kind of like working on here all right and now we are going to trim them down so this is what they'll be trimmed to let's I think it's one and a quarter inch let's double check yep they're all one and a quarter so we're basically they all are a little bit bigger and they have those little dog ears on, so we will be we'll be trimming them, trimming them down to the same size, so they're just a hair bigger. And I'm just gonna use my uh, my two and a half inch cutting. I'm not gonna use any of the special <laughs> special tools, um, just because my block lock my block lock ruler. I I don't know how to do it to get like the one and a quarter inch. Oh, Robin! Yay! That's awesome! Robin's working on my unicorn embroidery kit. That's awesome. But yeah, so I don't know how to get the block lock rulers to be one and a quarter inch because they're one and a half inch, the one that I have. So I'm like, eh, I won't use that. And then the other one, the um, the slotted trimmers, you cut with it when it's um, before it's pressed open. And I'm just worried about accuracy because when you press it open, things can shift and move a little bit. So I think it's gonna be more accurate for us since we're going for accuracy with these tiny little squares to press it open like this and then, then just trim it. And I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna just use my little Omni Grid, um, my two and a half inch thing. So I like the Omni Grid because it has that diagonal line. I'm gonna put that diagonal right on the diagonal seam here. And then we'll just measure our one and a quarter inch. And I am gonna put my, I'm gonna put my um, my cutting glove on again. Let's get that working for us. Oh, Gretchen got the unicorn too. Yes. Yeah, so, um, if you guys checked your emails, I'm having a little. Uh, little something special going on for newsletter people right now. Um, so I'll send out another one uh, probably Friday morning. So, um, and I don't, I know some people are having trouble getting my emails and I'm not sure why. Like sometimes it says it's, a lot of it's because of email filtering systems now. So, uh, you know, these email systems like Gmail and you know Yahoo and wherever your email thing is, they try and be smart for you and filter out things that they think are you know you might not want or that are like I don't know I don't know but a lot of people aren't getting them and I think it's because of because of that and the problem is is I can't do much for that. I'm gonna to have to research that a little bit more, but I know it's it's um, something that I can't really adjust on on my side. It's a it's a like 
male trying to be smart thing. Oh, you had to re-sign up and it worked, Gretchen? Huh, all right. Yeah, so if you guys are not sure if you're signed up or, or just want to re-sign up, um, then you can head over to my website, penguinandfish.com. And uh, if you go to, there'll be a, like a sign up for the newsletter text, or if you go to the free pattern, there's a free pattern link. If you go to that, then uh, um, that will sign you up for the newsletter. You get a free embroidery pattern with the newsletter. And then if you do that, then you'll get my, my little um, update, um, my little reminder about what's going on. Uh, I think I think Friday I'll get that'll send out. Oh, I used to have a patch of strawberries. Yum. My parents had a, a little strawberry patch, but the chipmunks always eat ate the strawberries before before they could get to them. Little jerk butts eating all the strawberries. Every once in a while you'd catch a teeny tiny strawberry. But not very often they'd get to them too fast. Oh man, you guys, we're going to be here all day cutting these little little guys. Pressing them didn't take hardly any time. But that's okay. We can talk about strawberries. That makes me happy. Oh, another thing is it's my mom's birthday today, and I think she's in here, so uh, you should wish my mom happy birthday. <laughs> and her birthday concludes birthday uh, week. <laughs> uh. My uh, brother Jared's was on the fourth, and my brother Justin's was on the eighth, and Mom's is on the Mom's is on the tenth. Then Dad and me are the oddballs out. That's kind of how my husband's family is. To John, my husband is is the oddball, and then the rest of the family is all in September. So. It's September is his birthday month. <laughs> oh yeah, her name's Pat, and she's she's in here. Or I think I, I think I saw her pop in here. My husband picked out a whole pretty bouquet of um, tulips with a cute vase and had it sent to sent to my mom <laughs> and we can at least pretend it's spring <laughs> I think they're gonna get the snow like we have or they started getting some sloppy snow and it might turn into this bigger snow like what we're getting Oh, you make tons of stuff for baby showers, booties, blankets, stuffies. That's neat. I, like, I like the bib idea. That's a good... I'll have to think about doing that. I, I haven't done bibs ever, but that seems like a really smart, like, just a bunch of washable bibs. That seems like a good idea. I'll have to look into that. That seems easy enough, too. And a great way to use smaller, smaller pieces. All right, two more, and then we're done with our first eight. So I think we got, we have um, 24 to do, I think. So for step five, we have two stacks of eight, and then for step six, we have two stacks of four. So 24 total. So we'll, we'll get through them. I 
I can't wait to wash up this baby quilt though that I'm making uh, because I'm uh, those ties that I'm using. I'm tie quilting it, which means I'm not I'm not sewing and quilting it all together. I'm just using yarn and I'm tying it, um, putting like little little ties in it, and I'm using 100% wool yarn for that. So once I wash it, it should felt up and those little ties should turn into like little balls of like felted little yarn that all shrunk up. And so that's what's gonna hold hold the quilt together, are these little yarn balls. And, and I'm excited to see how that turns out in the wash. So I'm, I'm gonna wash it before I uh, give it to them. So I'm gonna finish doing the ties then I'm going to give it a wash, which will also kind of fluff it up a little bit. And then I'll have to wrap it cute somehow too. So the shower's on Saturday, so I gotta, gotta get it done. <laughs> like I said, it's gonna snow. I'm gonna be stuck here, to, stuck here uh, tomorrow. Although I got a lot of work to do here, but gonna have to sneak it in. I might stay up a little bit tonight and and uh, put put those ties in too. Uh, how close do I tie? For this I'm doing them about five inches apart. Um, usually when I tie I do it a bit closer. However, I'm worried about getting it done if I do it any further apart. So just how, how it kind of divided up the space, five inches seemed to work. It's actually five inches by a little less than five inches just because, you know, I didn't, I didn't really measure at all when I made this quilt. So it's not like a perfect, you know, beautiful size for like to dividing it by five. Um, but one, one side kind of worked out to every five inches and the other was just a little less. So the math on that's getting weird. I'm going to just kind of estimate in areas. But yeah, it probably could use maybe a little bit more, uh, tied a little bit closer together, but I think it's gonna be fine. So we're working on these. I, I switched to my second pile of eight. So that's this yellow with that cream, that cream with the little floral bits on. So that's, oh, here's, this is a better example. There you can see the flower on there. But yeah, so this is, uh, we're through stack one of eight. So on to the next grouping of eight. Gosh, I really am a little bummed that I didn't get a swim today though. Oh well, and I won't go tomorrow. I'm probably not gonna leave tomorrow because I think tomorrow is supposed to be just even worse. But luckily this all I the stuff I need to do I have at home here. Oh, that'd be cool, Gretchen. I make sure to share um in the penguin and fish crafters group. Yeah. All you guys, like I, I I'm hearing like so many kind of fun projects that you guys are working on um tonight here. I'd love to see what you're up to. Um, so if, you, if you're not in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook, uh, be sure to just, you know, in the Facebook search, do a search for Penguin and with the ampersand Fish Crafters and it should pop up. Um, and then just click join and I'll let you in. All right, one and a quarter. These are so small. Ooh, that one got a little twisted, but I think we're gonna be fine. I do feel a little bit safer having this glove on. This is that glove that has I don't know, that Teflon or whatever on the inside of it. 
So if I accidentally slice myself, then it shouldn't, in theory, cut my finger off. <laughs> So I just started, while well, I started this baby quilt, I started watching uh, season three of the Santa Clarita Diet <laughs> with Drew Barrymore. Have any of you guys watched that at all yet? It's, it, I had a, it had to grow on me a little bit, but now I think it's just goofy and, and fun and it's the perfect work on a baby quilt, tie all those ties on a baby quilt uh, show to watch. I think it's on it's on Netflix. So I think it's probably definitely not for everyone. It's a like a light-hearted comedy, like just kind of like a weird, goofy, sweet comedy, except for they've joined that genre, like just a quirky, goofy comedy that where the pacing is kind of silly and it's just silly. Like if you can imagine a, a just a fun you know, modern day comedy like that. But then they've, uh, the like cleverness of it, I think, is they've combined that genre with like zombies. <laughs> uh, so it's this weird playful thing. So Drew Barrymore basically becomes a zombie and then they're just trying to live as a family <laughs> still. <laughs> and, you know, dealing with the fact that, yeah, the fact that she has other food needs, basically, um, from being a zombie. So, you know, how do you deal with that? And they're just realtors, and it's just, it's just funny. It's just goofy and quirky, except for, you know, so this whole zombie thing, though, they are, it's pretty graphic, but that's part of the comedy of it, so it's just... I, I just like when shows do that where it's just a weird combination of genres. I just think that's funny. Yeah, Glennis, exactly. It's That's what I'm saying. It's pretty gross. Like, I would not eat and watch it, <laughs> really. It's it's absurdly kind of gross. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm like, it's not for anybody, everybody, but, like, it's just... Again, I just think it's clever how they combine that, like, over-the-top, gross, you know, bloody zombie stuff um, with, like, the, like, light-hearted comedy, like, just an airy, sweet, light-hearted family comedy sort of thing. <laughs> That's, you know, and then this totally grossness with it. It's just such a weird combo, and I think that's kind of why it, why it works. It's one of those ones that, like I said, had to grow on me a little bit, though. Like, the pacing is just goofy, and everyone's just a little over-the-top goofy. But once you um, get into that rhythm, then it's then it's just silly and fun. But, yeah, super gross. <laughs> You're always kind of waiting for it. Like, ew, how is this? This is going to get gross. So you're always kind of caught a little bit off guard by that. Ooh, I... Hope I didn't trim one of these too small. I almost trimmed that one too small. I suppose we'll find out. I have to make another one later. All right, second stack of eight is done. So here we are, our first stack, our second, and now we just have those two groupings of four. So we're totally gonna get this done. We're we're gonna get. Making pinwheels tomorrow. I'm I'm excited. I'm gonna get this done. Oops. Oops. Here. I want to see my markings. And then Game of Thrones starts soon. <laughs> this is where, this is like my train of thought while I trim stuff, trimming for a whole hour. It's just like TV. <laughs> uh. You know,
know, it's funny though today. So I, I was talking like I didn't, I didn't do my swim today. I am so much more wide awake than I have been. You know, I, I've been talking about how just completely exhausted I've been like post swimming. And today I didn't swim and I don't feel that way. So it's definitely, definitely the swimming that is just exhausting me, which is awesome. Like I love, I love it. That to me, it's like, all right, that means I got a good workout in, but holy cow, I, I definitely feel different today not doing that. Oh yeah, I'm hoping that's all done on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday is the baby shower, Joe, so I'm, I don't want to drive a long ways in crazy snow. So yeah, I think, I think, um, you know, we're going to have it all day tomorrow, and then I think Friday it's supposed to start melting right away. I mean, it's warm enough that it's not going to stick around, but you know, when it falls in bulk, you know, it's going to take a little while to, for it to go away. All right, there's one more in this group of four. Oh, you watched it. Yep, exactly like that, Robin. I think it's extra gross at the, I don't know. It's all gross throughout the whole thing. Ugh. I was thinking, oh, maybe it's grosser at the beginning, but then I'm just remembering she just did something super gross then. <laughs> Uh, that's, I don't know. It took me a long time. I, I, I know people started talking about it, you know, when the first season came out, that it was really good and everything, but I kind of, you know, I watched like the little preview and I'm like, I don't know if I can watch this show. I don't like gross stuff like that. And I still don't like it, but you know, how they do it is really kind of funny. Oh, you're going on the bus for the quilt hop. Oh, that's interesting. I bet you that'll be fun. All right. Oh, your brother loves the show. Funny. Yeah, it, it, it kind of grows on you. All right, we're doing the last four here. So, oh, this was not nearly as not fun as I thought it was going to be, <laughs> trimming all these triangles. Uh, it's just one of those processes that you got to accept. Yep, cutting all these out is going to be part of it and it's going to take a long time. Oh wow, I almost trimmed this one too small. Okay, three more. And I'm going to have to place these again so they don't like blow off the table or something. Oh, it would be a nightmare trying to group all these together again. And you know, I know I'm going to be working on this again tomorrow. So if you're not sure, I said this yesterday too, if you're not sure if you're going to work on it right away, definitely label these pieces, like label what step it is that you're working on with them and, you know, label what colors or what on the cutting guide, all of that, because if these get all messed up, ugh, it's gonna take forever to, maybe I've looked at them enough that maybe now it won't take forever to, to figure out what's what, but ugh, if this would have happened yesterday when I was just getting used to all these fabrics together, I just, I don't think I'd be able to put them back together again, or it'd take a while. Okay, hopefully I didn't mess any of these up. I know I caught myself measuring on an eighth of an inch, not the quarter inch at, at one point. So hopefully I didn't do that anywhere else and didn't miss it or and um, just didn't catch it. This is the last one. So we should have a pile of perfect little one and a quarter inch 
half square triangle units after this. Yeah, I'm with the anoline. And in theory, the block lock would help keep it from moving, but I don't have one this small. I don't know if they make one this small. All right, that is it. All right, let's take a look. So we have um, these guys here. So again, this is the step six piles. These are the step um, five piles. And then we have uh, these guys from yesterday, the step four pile. So these are our piles that will eventually turn into all of those tiny pinwheels. And then we also have these uh, blocks of um, these four patch blocks all done. So this is from like step one and two. So that is done. We're just waiting to sew those together. And let's just take a look at, at our picture again. So yeah, so all of these little triangles, these guys right here, that's gonna be all of these little pinwheels. You know, here's some half square triangles on the edges here. They're just everywhere in this block. Anywhere you have like a triangle basically period is gonna be made from all of these in all sorts of combinations. Like look, here's you know a red and a blue one. Here's a red and a white one all you know a tan and a blue it's just all the different combinations that's why i don't want to mess these up because they're in the just the right spot so tomorrow i'm hoping that we can sew all of these together i'm hoping we can sew every single pinwheel it'll take a little time we got to do rows of them and then sew them together um, but if we can get that far then we are like on the road to finishing this guy up so i'm i'm stoked I think, uh, I think accuracy, like all this time spent on cutting them just perfect, I'm thinking that's going to be kind of the key, the key to this, besides the organization. Really the organizing it, keeping, keeping the steps together, I think that's kind of the deal with this. So alright you guys, uh, that is it for tonight. I'm going to flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening here. All right, so I think we made some good progress on on this. I was really, I was hoping um, that we'd get it all done tonight. I wasn't um, really sure if we would be able to do that. Oh, look how tiny these are. They're just itty bitty. But no, we, we just cruised through, through that. So that's great. So now I'm going to finish up the little baby quilt here. I will definitely be sure to share that with you tomorrow. I think I'll have it wa hopefully done and washed. We'll see how long it takes to do these ties. I might be um, underestimating how long it's going to do take to do these ties, but we'll see. I'll definitely share uh, my progress with you. It's got to be done by Saturday, so it'll be done, done by then. So, all right, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. Thanks for letting me chat about TV shows all night. <laughs> uh, and I will catch you guys tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central here on the Penguin Fish page on Facebook. Have a great evening. Good night.